so let us start with the architecture see this is very important the first terminology is the hardware i think everyone know what hardware is hardware basically comprises of your cpu ram disk okay so i am just giving you an abstract view so this is the hardware so now what is the software which is actually talking to the hardware if you say operating system yes but what inside operating system operating system is a very big software there are multiple small softwares working together right so there is a software which is called kernel okay it is inside the operating system only so that software is called kernel it's it has only one job to talk to the hardware okay so kernel talks to the hardware it knows how how to talk to the hardware basically kernel understands the language of hardware all right and then if the kernel understands the language of hardware how will it understand our language see i am a end user or you are the end user you will be working on a linux server right you have to run commands so kernel only understands the language of hardware it doesn't understand commands and everything so to you know bridge this gap from the end user to the hardware there is another program which is called shell program okay so shell programs job is to check whatever user is typing okay if the user is typing a command so shell uh, program will check what is this command what is the code written in the command it will explain the code to the kernel okay shell program will be explaining the code of the command to the kernel and then kernel will understand the code and then it will talk to the hardware to get the output all right so these are some things like hardware talks uh, sorry uh, end users will be talking to shell we will be giving commands to shell shell will be translating the commands to the kernel and then kernel will talk to the hardware to generate the output okay this is a kind of a chain reaction all right so shell is not only talking to users it is also talking with the applications see whenever we install any application it is doing something right so in the background the application is also running some commands in the background which we don't see so you know the, those commands will be handled by the shell itself and then shell will uh, translate the commands to the kernel so that kernel can understand and then kernel will talk to the hardware so this is the chain i see if you are not able to you know remember this chain no worries i'll be you know explaining you this again and again throughout this course and this is very important okay so this is the fundamentals of linux okay if you understand this everything will become easy all right so this was the architecture the basic overview okay now coming to the directory structure now what is a directory structure when we talk about operating system what is directory structure let me give you first example of windows okay it will make you understand things easy see if when i install windows like in my c drive as you can see if i open it i will get some in, i will get some uh, folders for example program files users windows these are three folders will be present every time i install a new windows operating system right so windows program files these two and users okay so this is the directory structure for windows what about linux when linux is installed what do we get we get bin directory okay we say directory in uh, linux and folder in windows so we we get bin directory we get boot dev etc home root run sbin temp usr var so there are so many directories created and each directory has its own purpose okay so okay one more thing like in windows we say partitions and c drive d drive right like in windows we have c drive we have d drive right and all the operating system files are normally in c drive right it c drive will contain windows files okay and might be d drive is having your movies and games etc i i can say data okay your data your data is in d drive and all the windows installation related files are in c drive okay as well as user and program files all right this is about windows now what about linux 
when we talk about line x it does uh, these drives are non existence okay so these drives do not exist we have a concept called slash this slash is called root okay this root is what starting of the operating system okay so we do not have the concept of drives here we have a concept of slash this slash slash is called root okay as you as you know the tree has a root the tree starts from the root and then it has some branches similarly in linux operating system the operating starts from the root and it is denoted by a uh, slash symbol okay and under the slash we will be having multiple directories okay so all right so before i explain you all the directories let me tell you there are like three root in linux one root is what the starting of the operating system which is slash second root is the root directory okay it's a home directory of root user and the third one is the root user itself so root user is what it's the admin account in linux admin account means admin account uh, using admin account you can do anything in linux okay there are no restrictions you can run any command okay and uh, you know in linux there are basically two types of users one is the root user which is the admin second type of user is a non root user so non root users basically have restrictions non root user cannot run all the commands they can only run limited commands okay all right so with this basic understanding let me explain you all the uh, direct so let me do one thing let me just quickly start my virtual machine vmware player so i'm going to play it so it's up to you you can use the online lab also and i recommend that also but for just one time for the installation practice you have to create the vm okay because ultimately when you start working your uh, team leader or your sme might be assigning you task to you know uh, install operating system linux operating system on three virtual machines okay then you should know you should be comfortable okay so it's booting up let me just accept this license and then i will explain you how you can do it okay so see i am using a graphical user interface that's why i'm getting this accept this license and all that all that stuff right so this is just one time activity when you are using gui this will happen if you are not using gui then there will be no license acceptance prompt like this okay you want to use you want to install two linux operating system in one single hard disk yes it is possible at the time of installation you can create two partitions okay so in the first partition you can uh, select the partition and select the option automatic as i explained you yesterday you know on that first partition your operating system will be installed and again use the other operating system iso and then use the second partition for the installation all right so again this is again one time activity as you see on the screen it is a welcome screen as for the first time i am logging in right so full name let me give a i see in this screen when it ask you full name it is asking for the user account so let me use a student a name student okay so i am just creating a non root account student username is student full name is student click next set a password for student user let me give red hat as the password although it is weak but it's fine for now okay start using red hat enterprise linux and here you go so this is the uh, desktop of the rhe late okay all right so if i go to files i want to show you the installation 
uh, what do you get after installation? If I go to files, I'm immediately uh, seeing is the home directory of student user. On the left, you see home. Okay. So I don't want to go to home. I want to go to other locations. On the left, you see last option, other locations. On the right, there is computer icon. Okay. And to the right, see 13 GB slash 18 GB available, which means 13 GB is free in this computer. And in the end, you see a slash here. Okay. So basically this is the starting point of my operating system. Let me get inside. Now you see, these are the files, which are, these are the for directories, which are created after Linux installation. Okay. Bin boot dev etc home. And on the directory, you see an arrow. It's a basically a shortcut. Okay. So original location is different. So bin boot dev etc home. There is a root directory as well, right? There is S bin. There are basically four shortcuts bin S bin lib lib 64. So basically the original location is in USR. You see a USR directory here. If I go inside, you will see bin lib lib 64 and S bin. See all these are original files and in the slash, these are just the shortcuts. I will tell you how to create a shortcut in Linux. Okay. So now coming to the explanation of these directories. So basically, first of all, let me explain you about USR directory. See, as I told you, there are two types of users. One is a root user and another one is a non root user in a, in a Linux operating system. There will be only one root user and many non root users, right? Okay. So root user can run all the commands. And non root users can run only limited commands. Okay. So basically when we say command, what is a command? It is a kind of a piece of code written in a file, right? So it is a, just a piece of code written in a file. So non root users can run only those commands, which are present in USR bin directory. Okay. In this location inside USR, there is a bin directory. And shortcut is here as well. This is the same directory. Okay. So if I go here, I will see a lot of files here. See, there are so many files created. All these files are basically commands. Okay. Let me give you one example. Let me open <clears throat> activities, then terminal. Okay. So let, there is one very small command, which is called LS. LS means list the contents of the directory. Directory means right now, where are you? So in that, in that location, what is present? So in my current location right now, my cursor, this blinking cursor is in slash home slash student PWD command can tell you present working directory. So right now I am inside slash home slash student. If there is a user Rohit, if he logs in, he will get the slash home slash Rohit directory as a home directory. Okay. So every user will have its own home directory. So like I typed this command LS, I get an output. All these are directories inside my home directory. Let me show you graphically. If I go to home, see desktop document, download music pictures, same you see here, desktop document, download music picture. So LS means just list whatever is present in your current directory. Okay. So LS is what a command. And if, when I say command, it is actually a file, a piece of code. So if student user can run LS, the command LS should be in slash USR bin. Let me go to this location slash USR bin. This is the location here. LS file should be there. So let me search LS. So the first file is this. Okay. The first file is LS. So, so in this location, USR bin, all the commands are there and these commands are uh, meant to be used by non root users. Okay. All the root user can run any command. There is no restriction, but a non root user can run only those commands, which are present in slash USR slash bin. Okay. 
second location is usr s bin so all the system administration commands are there which means root user can run only root user can run these commands so let me go to that location inside s bin so inside s bin there are again some commands which only root user can run for example uh, let me give you one command let's say yum install firefox so it is a it is a command which only a root user can run and it will install firefox browser okay <clears throat> um okay there is some error within the yum which i will tell you later let me use some other command let's say pvs there is a command pvs which only root user can run and i am getting a warning i am a student user right so warning running as a non root user functionality may be unavailable and permission denied in the end so obviously so this pvs command will be in s bin so if i can check hold on let me search pvs command here so yes there is one command pvs in s bin that's why if this command had been in you know bin directory so student user might uh be able to use it but since this file is in s bin only root user can use it okay moreover this pvs command internally has a code written that only root can run this command non root users cannot even if you copy and paste it in bin directory there will be no effect student user will not be able to run okay so just to categorize the commands there are two different directories all right 